glorious morning it is. I've got a heck of a treat today. I get to work on a Volkswagen van again, but it isn't mine. Here it is. Well, the plan for today is gonna to be dropping the fuel tank. It's a messy, stinky job, but it's gotta get done. It needs to get resealed along with both of the fuel expansion tanks. They're plastic bottles located in each of the front wheel wells, which you'll be seeing in just a couple minutes. And be sure when working under a car that you're wearing something that you don't care about. Before dropping your fuel tank, be sure that you have all your parts laid out so you know what you need. Later on, I'll be replacing the exhaust intermediate pipe, the catalytic converter, and the coolant expansion tank. Put a catch can underneath because this is going to be messy stuff. I know what you're thinking, draining the tank this way is going to take a long time. But I informed the client that I would need an empty fuel tank to drop it. Next up, take the fuel cap off, put it somewhere safe, take the three Phillips head screws out. If you want to reach behind and make sure it's actually loose. While we wait for the fuel tank to drain, we're going to be removing the passenger side fuel expansion tank, which is located right in the wheel well here. You want to find the lines and remove them. Get a wrench or a socket and ratchet to remove the nuts that hold it in place. That is one messy, dirty looking tank. Next up, you want to remove this piece, which actually holds the outside of the fuel filler neck in place. Reach behind it, and you're actually going to rotate it, and it just pops out. Now that we've removed this piece, the fuel filler neck is free to come out. You want to twist it so that it comes out the wheel well and give it a good tug. Fuel filler neck has been removed. For the driver's side, I can clearly see that these hoses are shot. So I'm just going to take my hose cutter and snip them off. Next, I'm going to remove that nut. Be sure not to lose this washer, you're going to need it. This one, as you can see, is actually cracked right there. And there's all kinds of dirty, nasty stuff inside. You want to go to your front lower control arms and locate the 13 millimeter bolts that attach the fuel tank straps to the body. Located here and over there on the other side. Make sure your vehicle is properly supported. Place a jack underneath the fuel tank. Use a piece of wood, that way you're not denting your tank. Be certain to set aside the parts that you've removed so that you don't lose any of the hardware. Now that the fuel straps have been removed, you're going to want to slowly lower the tank until you can easily access the fuel sending unit and hoses that are attached to the top. Now that you can access your fuel sending unit plug, simply pull it right out and slide your tank out of the way. We're going to want to check to make sure that there's no rust inside the tank. Thankfully, it appears that the majority of the gas tank is very clean. This fuel tank doesn't need to be replaced. Go over to where you have all of your new parts and locate the proper grommet. Be sure that you place the correct end inside of the tank. In this case, the flat side is what goes in the tank. As there are three grommets needed for the top of the tank, we know that these three grommets are the correct ones to use. Placing the grommets in are easily done. And here's the other one. Next is the fuel sending unit located on the left hand side of the tank. Because it's a twist and lock, you'll have to use a screwdriver and a hammer. But be gentle, you don't want to break it. As you can see, it's a rather simple affair. And here's the new sender. It usually comes with a new seal. But just in case it doesn't, the fuel tank reseal kits available by some retailers include the new seal. It's a good idea not to use the same tools that you used to remove the old sending unit because you don't want to break this. In this case, I'm going to use a wrench. Simply place the wrench inside of the grooves 
and turn until the sending unit locks in place. Next, we're going to replace the two balancing hoses located on either side of the tank. Now that I've replaced the fuel tank sending unit grommets and the two side hoses, it's time to find the missing fitting. And there's the missing fitting. But as we follow the original balance tube over to where it's affixed to the chassis, we find that we need a Phillips head screwdriver to remove it. All we want to do is remove the tube. We want the clamp to stay in place. Carefully remove the tube. To properly install this tube, you're going to want to affix these to each end. Now that the new fittings are connected to the balance line, we're going to attach it to the underside of the body, not to the fuel tank. I don't have a fuel rated nylon hard line to put on this side, so we're going to have to redo it and use the leftover bit of hose here. Now that the new line is ready to go back in place, you're going to have to guide it through up above these hoses. Now that the new hose is in place, be sure to tighten this clamp back down. Be sure when you're lifting the gas tank back up to reattach the fuel tank sending unit harness. Be sure when you're putting the straps back up that you replace any of the rubber pads that happen to be missing. Now take your new fuel hose and put them in place. Now we get to install the new expansion tanks. You have two grommets that were included with the reseal kit. Bad news. Upon trying to install the new check valves, these broke on both. I was even trying to use petroleum jelly to help slide it in. But unfortunately, these aren't made in Germany anymore. For a moment there, I didn't know what to do. So I got in contact with the company and I asked how soon I'd be able to get them. He said, well, anywhere from three to five days. Is there any possibility of doing some sort of warranty exchange? And he said, typically not. But I can see from your business name, Fiero Addicts, he felt sorry for me. So he said, how about this? You and I become best friends and I'll send you two. What a nice guy. I was super stressed out about this. So that's a bit of good news. Now back to it. Now that the replacements have arrived, the job can be completed. Huzzah! To insert the new check valves, I highly recommend using petroleum jelly. You put it around on the inside of the gasket or on the unit itself. When you're installing the new check valves, be sure that the ports are aimed in the correct direction. In this case, you want the ports to be aimed towards the inside of the vehicle, where these ports are on the bottom of the tanks. To install the next one, it's a repeat of the last. Now that both of the new check valves have been installed, the tanks can go in. reattach the nut and the washer. Now to attach the lines with the hose clamps. It doesn't matter which line goes to which port, but it should be pretty evident. One tank installed. Next is replacing this universal fit catalytic converter which was booger welded on. Shame on you! And this intermediate pipe as well. Out with the old, in with the new. You want to make sure that your gasket sealing surfaces are properly cleaned. When installing your intermediate pipe, you want to make sure that you have a couple of the bolts already in the holes. This is for two reasons, so you can put two gaskets in place. 
Next is so that you have something to hold the intermediate pipe in place while you tighten the nuts. Now, simply re-tighten the bolts and nuts. First things first, you want to locate the inlet side of the catalytic converter. In this case, because the muffler is for an earlier model Vanagon, you have to use a different gasket. Now that I've finished the install of the new intermediate pipe and catalytic converter, along with new gaskets, I've reattached the oxygen sensor. Next, I'll be replacing the coolant expansion tank, which as you can see, is badly deteriorated and starting to crack. There are two screws located on either side of the tank. Now that both screws have been removed, be sure to clamp off the coolant hoses that go into the tank. Now that the coolant hoses have been clamped off, locate the two clamps that you'll be undoing that are located on the coolant tank ports. In this case, I have a specialty tool just for the task. And here's my tool. As you can see, it looks like a pair of pliers at one end, but on the other end, it has a special device that pries down on those clamps. First, remove the overflow hose. Simply set the tool in place and apply pressure. And just like that, the clamp is now loose. If you enjoyed that last video, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe. Come along for the ride, and I'll catch you soon. Now be sure to take your old faulty sending unit and give it the proper send-off that it deserves.